Exploring Local Farms Video series created by the Ann Arbor Public Schools Environmental Education Program. We're at Mark Boone's farm and I noticed he has a lot of pawpaw trees. It's a kind of tree that grows an interesting fruit that has uh, uh, sort of grows in clumps like this. It tastes sort of like custard. I'll break one open so you can see what it looks like. It has big seeds in it and you can just spit the seeds out when you're done. Pawpaw is a native Michigan plant. It has grown here for a long, long time. I visited Mark Boone's farm to learn more about this delicious fruit. My name is Mark Boone, and my orchard, my papa orchard, is on the corner of Pop Road and Ellsworth Road, um, about eight miles west of Ann Arbor. And I have about 300 papa trees, uh, which I planted back in 1987. And uh, every year I have a U-pick operation to keep them out uh, by uh, papa fruit. Unlike most farms, that plant new seeds and harvest plants every year. An orchard is filled with perennial plants that keep growing year after year. Pawpaw trees produce fruit every fall. Pawpaws are an understory tree that grow well in shady, wet places in Michigan. This plant is adapted to growing conditions here in Michigan and it doesn't need much help from the farmer in order to grow well. They love uh, uh, heavy mulch. On the, uh, on the ground. They're uh, used to growing deep in the woods, so they can stand shade. These uh, leaves here are only about eight inches long, but in the uh, woods they could be uh, two foot long. It's the biggest leaf on any native tree in North America. That helps them uh, to grow. They can grow in 99% shade. Fruit trees often have to be protected from insect pests and diseases with chemical pesticides and other strategies. Pawpaws don't have many pests and don't require the use of chemical sprays. I uh, like to grow uh, a variety of different fruit. Uh, when I say different, I mean outside the uh, apple and rose family. Uh, one of the problems we have with our uh, fruit trees is that they're almost all in the rose family. Apples, cherries, peaches, raspberries, strawberries, pears plums, apricots, they're all in the rose family. They all share a lot of the same diseases. They all share a lot of the same insects. So it's really an insect's delight to come in and find all these mutually edible fruits. Um, so I plant pawpaws are, are an entirely different family. Um, and these are Cornelian cherries, which are done this year. They're actually not cherries, they're uh, kind of a dogwood, which is again outside that family. So I don't have the, uh, I don't have to spray uh, my pawpaws, I don't spray my Cornelian cherries because they don't get the pests that are bothering uh, apples and, and peaches. One time pawpaws were probably one of the most common understory trees in uh, the eastern United States, but they, um, we think they were spread by the uh, uh, mastodons and they lost those and then they uh, they have a heavy seed which most animals will not swallow so uh, once an area was cleared and the land was plowed up for farming unlike uh, dandelions and uh, and maples and other trees that had more mobile seeds uh, pawpaws um, didn't come back so uh, we have large areas of the country now that no longer have pawpaws at one time we know the Ohio River the Rue here on rivers. They were just uh, loaded with pawpaws up and down the rivers. Pawpaw seeds are heavy and they don't easily spread without the help of animals. Today, mastodons are extinct. Without these large animals to eat the pawpaw fruit and poop out the seeds, this plant does not spread much on its own. Humans are the main animal spreading the pawpaw today. Pawpaws have been eaten by people in Michigan for a long time. It was used as a food by many indigenous people in what is today the eastern United States. By growing pawpaws, farmers like Mark are helping people learn about this traditional food and stay connected to the history of the land on which we live.